It's time for a Nightwing to fly solo again, back in Bloodhaven with his own form of wealth. So how is that going to go for him if he also has a new villain? You found yourself in the Comic Story and Channel, where I give you a brief synopsis of many storylines happening within the world of comic books. I break them down into digestible bites and then read it back to you in a narrative fashion, acting out some of the voices, trying to give you a bit of enjoyment as you figure out what's happening in the world of comics. The purpose of this is to allow you to go to your local store and pick up the next issues or go to your local digital retailer and grab it that way. Today we're going to be covering Nightwing issues 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83. And this is the first story of Nightwing, setting him up in Bloodhaven. New villains, new family, new goals, new purposes. All of the alterations that we make to the panel text and images are to prevent copyright problems, and if you want to get the full context of this storyline or the artwork, make sure you pick it up yourself. On that note, let's get into it, because honestly, I don't have much to give you as a preface to this, because it kind of kicks off the brand new Nightwing arc. Right before this, he got his memories back, he was in Joker War. This is all new. I hope you guys enjoy, and if you do, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on that bell for notifications. Gotham Heights Park. A long time ago, there were a group of boys bullying someone. There was a young girl who tried to stop them, but one of the boys was Shelton Lyle. Shelton was a very privileged kid, perfect teeth, wealthy family, but it wasn't just the attention of the girls that the boys got. It also struck a chord with the young Dick Grayson. By this time, Dick had already lost his parents to Tony Zuko, so there really wasn't anything that could hurt him. Shelton commented that he saw the last act of the Flying Graysons at the circus and said that it was the greatest show that he had ever seen. But that didn't faze him. Dick stood his ground telling Shelton to leave these kids alone. Shelton took a swing, but Dick, being rather nimble for his size, used it and easily headbutted Shelton without so much as taking his hand out of his pockets. Of course, this led to a brawl, which now also brought the attention of the police. Shelton asks if they know how much trouble they're going to be in. His dad owns the cops! And the little girl asks, Do you really think that they'd listen to you over me? What do you think, dad? And behind the little girl is Jim Gordon. Jim brought Dick home and little Barbara was amazed that he lived in a castle. Thought that the lack of dragons and a moat was a little disappointing though. As Dick went inside of Wayne Manor, Jim explained to Alfred what had happened and Dick started to quietly wash the dishes with Alfred stopping him. Why are you doing my job? Dick says that even if it was, he still wants to help. Alfred then begins to dry the dishes stating that he heard that there was a fight and that he fought three other students. Dick says that there was a kid and the others were hurting him. I'm sorry. Alfred laughs, telling him that Master Bruce may feel the need to wear a costume to be a hero. But I am glad that Dick Grayson stood up when someone else was in need. It takes a different hero to help out without a mask. Now we go to the current times, 2021, and a group of college students run after a small dog throwing rocks and kicking it. Gotham has a madness in it, but this is Bloodhaven. These people are just cruel. After kicking the puppy one last time, Nightwing steps through the fog, stating, Usually I'd open up with something disarming and witty, but I'm not usually this disgusted. One of the men from the group yells that they were just having some fun, and Nightwing asks, Your idea of fun is torturing small animals? You really need to broaden your horizons. The student reaches into his jacket, pulling out a gun, stating, Well, I guess the fun is over, and he points it at the dog. Nightwing bats the gun away with his baton, and he starts to take down the group, stating, I am NOT going to let you shoot a puppy in the head! And in his experience, the next thing is the dog waking up without its memories, driving a cab. With or without amnesia, a dog shouldn't be behind the wheel of a car. As the college students run away, Nightwing takes off his glove and he holds it out to the puppy, telling it that he isn't going to hurt it. The dog growls and bites his hand. Nightwing picks her up and pets her. That's okay. Let's just get you to the vet so that I can go to the doctor. But meanwhile, elsewhere, Blockbuster holds a secret meeting with the mayor of Bloodhaven. As Blockbuster waits, the mayor says that he does have office hours and an office. Meeting at night under a bridge feels like a way to attract trolls. Commissioner McLean opens up a briefcase of paperwork and Blockbuster says that a number of his businesses have already been stagnating. The council president, Melinda, looks at the paper asking if he has spreadsheets, really putting the organized in the organized crime. Blockbuster tells her not to pretend to be shocked by a well-run operation. And the mayor asks, Why are we out here? What do you expect me to do? Blockbuster tells him that he is expecting him to do as he was told. And you have failed. 
As the mayor begins to ask what would he have had him do, Blockbuster grabs him by the head telling him, we are having this meeting so that you can be made an example out of. He begins to apply a bit of pressure and the mayor's skull cracks. He then begins to clean the blood from his hand, stating that the mayor's body will be found. As council president, you will be next in line. Your job will be to serve the city, and I am the city. Do we have an understanding? Melinda tells him that, Melinda tells him of course, and Blockbuster goes on stating, I spoke to your father, he's a killer, but he is not a liar. I understand that you are estranged, but Tony spoke highly of you. Congratulations, Mayor Zuko. Back with Nightwing, he heads home after a visit to the vet, and then to the doctor when he notices something strange. He owns the apartment block where he lives, paid for when he had Wayne money, but he's quickly running out of funds. But something's wrong. There's someone in his apartment. Without giving him a chance, Nightwing suits up, jumping through his own window, but is quickly thrown against the wall. As Nightwing lays upside down against it, he looks up, and Barbara says, surprise. And if you're going to operate as a superhero out of an apartment, you need better security. You might have some cutting edge stuff, but anyone with years of experience trespassing and advanced defense disabling technology wouldn't have a problem. There is something I need to tell you though, Dick. Before she could continue, she hears a bark and asks, what's that? And as Nightwing brings the dog in, Barbara screams, stating, oh my God, it's so adorable. Welcome to your forever home, little girl. Nightwing says that this is not her forever home, but Barbara tells him that once he brought this thing through the window, it became her forever home. Just accept that you have a fur baby now. But as to why I'm here, as Oracle, I was chosen to be the executor of Alfred Pennyworth's will. While you were not yourself, Dick, a lot has happened. You should take a seat. A few moments later, Nightwing looks at the laptop and says that it has a lot of zeros. He was, Barbara tells him, yeah. Alfred was a billionaire who liked to make sandwiches for those he cared about because he wanted to. She then takes out a letter, handing it over, stating that this might also help explain a bit. She didn't open it. As Nightwing sits, he opens up the letter and begins to read a letter from Alfred to him. Alfred said that he knew leaving his fortune to him would be a bit of a shock. But as Master Wayne's legal guardian, he was given a large amount of Wayne Industries stock, as well as a ludicrous amount of wealth he never had a need for. He invested much wisely in places that it would do the most good, which, in fact, he planned on coming to him for. Like Bruce, his mind is astonishing. He can think in ways no one else can. He is a problem solver and the world is full of problems. There would be no one better to leave this fortune with. Just know that he does believe in Dick Grayson and that he knows that the world will be a better place with more people like him wanting to help those in need. And above all, though they rarely say it out loud, he was very proud to call him his son. Meanwhile, in Upper Bloodhaven, Melinda comes home and her bodyguard asks, how did it go? She begins to wash her hands from the blood transferred from Blockbuster's handshake, stating that she is now the mayor. And the bodyguard asks if she's ready for this, and Melinda says she is. She is not, however, ready for him. The bodyguard says that she can't wait long. She may not get another chance. And Melinda looks at the poster of the Flying Graysons, and Nightwing specifically circled. And she says that he knows. Soon. Nightwing has spent his entire life working without a safety net, because he always had someone to catch him if he fell. First it was his parents, then his father, then his other father, then his friends, and then his brothers. Everyone needs someone to catch them when they fall, someone who makes them feel safe. But while Nightwing's new dog passes out from eating too much food, he looks at her empty bowl and says that he kind of wonders what it tastes like. Babs says that she's going to guess he hasn't eaten yet, so Nightwing tells her, Nope, come on, I know a nice place nearby. So a short while later, they're at a 24-hour pizza place. Nightwing orders two slices, and Babs asks, Really? You're a billionaire now. And Nightwing then decides to order four slices. But as they get their pizza, Nightwing says that there's a statue that he wants to show her. So the two head to the park, with the statue of a man fighting a giant sea creature. Nightwing says that Bloodhaven started as a small whaling town. This fountain was built back when people in the city believed that they could take on monsters and win. And as they sit, and they look in silence. Babs looks over, asking if he's okay. He's unusually contemplative today. Nightwing says that he forgot who he was, and Babs tells him, well, sure. He was kind of shot in the head. Can't really fault him for forgetting who he was. Nightwing then asks, what did he leave behind, though? What did he create that kept going when he was gone? What's so heroic about punching bad guys and then waiting to punch more? Bab says that there's more to it than that. He has saved lives, and pretty sure that he saved the world more than once. 
And it's not like he has confidence issues. He wears the tightest costume out of everyone in the group. Nightwing sighs. He looks down and he contemplates again. I just, I want to do more, Babs. With everything that Alfred left me, I kind of can. I'm just not sure where to focus this. Babs says that he's one of the world's greatest problem solvers. So she's pretty sure that he'll work it out. But while the two begin to eat their pizza, a man with his son says that he's sorry to bother, but would they happen to have some spare change? Babs says that she really doesn't carry cash, and the man says that that's okay. Most people don't these days anyway. And Nightwing stops, and he stares for a moment. Hey, wait, let me buy you some food. Like, lots of food, and whatever else you need. And invite friends, really, anyone who could use a meal. Don't hold back. So, a short time later at the pizza shop, the street is filled with all of Bloodhaven's drifters that could go for a bite to eat. Three young kids ask if it's okay to take theirs to go, and Nightwing tells them, of course. The man from before says that he can't thank them enough, and Nightwing smiles. It's really nothing, Martin. But as Nightwing gets ready to set up a hotel room for them, he notices that his pocket is a little lighter. He looks around and says, I think those kids stole my wallet. Don't tell Batman. Babs laughs. <laughs> Too late, it's already in the group chat. Nightwing stares as his phone begins to ping rapidly. And as they leave, Babs says, you might want to put that on silent. Cass has no self-control when it comes to emojis. But while Nightwing heads out to go back and get his wallet, Martin and his son begin to walk home when someone tells them that that looks like some good pizza. Martin asks the person if they'd like a slice, and the figure tells them that it's more of a stab than a slice that he's after. Tell the kid to run. As an arm with a strange-looking gun creeps out of the shadow, Martin tells his son, Uh, Elliot, go back to the pizza shop and stay there. Everything's going to be okay. Once Elliot is gone, the person tells him, No, it's not going to be okay. Martin tells the person, Please, I don't have anything. But the figure says, You have exactly what I'm looking for. As the trigger is pulled, a small mechanical arm shoots into Martin's chest and then quickly retracts. Martin looks at the fist-sized hole in his chest and the figure tells him, You had a heart. Elsewhere, Babs guides Nightwing towards the tracker that was in his wallet when she tells him to stop there and look around. He stands on top of the building, looking into the crowd when he notices Salvatore Moroni meeting with a woman. Unknown to Nightwing, the woman that Moroni is meeting is actually Melinda Zuko, the soon-to-be new mayor of Bloodhaven. But while the two discuss their business, Nightwing sees the three kids from before walking by, spotting a wallet on the table, and one of them quickly pockets it. As Moroni's men catches them, they pull out their guns and they begin to run. But Nightwing rushes down, knocking them out. As he's going down, Nightwing tells Babs, You know, we could have avoided all of this if we just stayed in and tried the kibble. Babs tells him, Nah, this is far better. You can't beat the combination of pizza and taking out overconfident goons. Also, the wallet stopped three blocks back under the Nugent Bridge. Go after the kids, I'll call the police. As Nightwing jumps down onto a passing truck, he tells her that there's no point. They're Moroni's people, they won't even be charged. Babs tells him that those men were about to kill children. She's still calling. But while she does that, Nightwing hurries over to where the signal last pinged to find a tent city for the homeless people. But by the looks of it, a tent city where no one is over 16. As all of the children look at Nightwing, one of them asks if he is the man without a heart. Please don't hurt anyone here. Nightwing tells her, no, I, I'd never. Sorry, just keep whatever it is you took. You need it more than me. A short while later at Nightwing's apartment, Babs says that he was right. The police did nothing. She has no idea how he can put up with this place. She then asks if he even got his wallet. He tells her no, but he knows what he wants to do with his money. And that is to be a safety net for this city. He wants to catch who's ever fallen in Bloodhaven. As the dog sits by the door, wagging its tail, there's a knock at the door, and someone says, Mr. Grayson, police, we'd like to have a word. Nightwing hurries over, opening it up. Sorry, I was asleep. And the detectives tell him that it's five in the afternoon. Did he have a late night? Nightwing pauses. What is this about? The other detective says that he reported his wallet stolen last night, canceled all of his cards. Well, before reporting his card stolen, a hotel was booked for Martin Holt. Nightwing says, yeah, that was me. Martin didn't steal my wallet. Hopefully you didn't have any trouble at the hotel. The detective says, well, yeah, but Martin never checked in. He was found murdered this morning. This causes a bit of shock for Nightwing. What? What about his son, Elliot? Is he okay? The detective says that they don't have any information about a son. Interesting that he does. Just down the street, Barbara answers her phone asking, what, missed me already? 
And Nightwing tells her that it's something like that. Could she come back? Pretty sure he's being accused of murder and she's his alibi. After getting dressed, he puts on some coffee and the detectives state that Mr. Holt was found dead this morning. His heart was removed. You don't know how, do you? He sets up asking, why would I know? The detectives tell him because he paid for the hotel for Mr. Holt. They don't want to theorize about why, but they're thinking that he didn't like a proposition and something went wrong and he cut out his heart. Just like he'd been taking the hearts of homeless people all over the city. That's when there's another knock at the door and Barbara walks in asking how's it going. Nightwing tells her, you know, I'm being accused of murder. How about you? She takes a seat and says, hello, my name is Barbara Gordon. I was with Dick Grayson all night. I have a GPS on my phone and I'll be happy to show you our movements for the last 24 hours. The detective tells her that they understand, but what is her relationship to this man? The two look at each other. Nightwing tells her, I've been wondering that myself. She says that she tells them that that's not relevant. And the detective tells her that they will decide what's relevant or not. This is a murder investigation. Barbara says, really? Because I have a law degree. Now we're both eager to help with your investigation, but if you're accusing Mr. Grayson when he has an alibi and there's absolutely no direct evidence linking him, that would be embarrassingly incompetent. With nothing else, the detectives leave, and Nightwing says that they've got to find Elliot. But what's more though is that the killer cut out Martin's heart. Yesterday, when he chased the kids into the tent city, they asked if he was the man without a heart. Barbara says that she'll start going through the police records to try and find out anything useful. So Nightwing suits up and says that if his hunch is correct, they're going to need more specific help. Later, as he's heading up to the rooftop, Tim Drake says that Batman wanted to give him something and hands him a wallet with a chain on it. Nightwing looks at Tim. I'm not going to live this down, am I? And Tim tells him, of course not. They go inside of the apartment and Tim asks, did you get a puppy? And Barbara tells him that Dick said that she was going to the pound. And Tim laughs, yeah, likely story. So are you supposed to take the dog on the missions? Nightwing tells him, yeah. And Tim asks why. Well, people are more approachable with a lovable dog, but also she needs a walk. So later, Nightwing gets into position above the tent city while Tim blends in below walking the puppy. After an hour, Tim radios back that he managed to find Elliot, but Elliot seems content staying there with the others, says he feels safe. He did mention that his father was killed by a man without a heart though and he isn't the only one. Too many kids in there have the same story. Nightwing tells him, all right, hurry up. We have trouble walking in. Brutale and an executioner just showed up. One of the kids asks, what do they want? And Brutale says that the people here have been stealing and that's a crime. A cut of every crime in the city goes to Blockbuster, no matter how pathetic. We bend the rules for homeless kids and Blockbuster will look weak. And Blockbuster doesn't ever look weak. Just then a baton bounces off Brutale's head and Nightwing asks, is this really where you wanted to be in life? Henchmen shaking down children. That's gotta be a career low. El Executioner fires off an electric blast, but Tim jumps in kicking and knocking him down. Nightwing then puts his batons together, screwing them in and tosses it to Tim, telling him to catch. Together, the two take on Brutale and Electrocutioner on their own, but a stray knife from Brutale shorts out Electrocutioner's power. Nightwing tells them to go back and inform Blockbuster that this area is under his protection. And as the two look around, they see the tents on fire and the children screaming for help. Tim looks back, asking the thugs if they're the ones who did this, and Electrocutioner says, No, you can't get money from dead people! Tim radios back that something is off. He can smell the accelerant from here. This fire was deliberately lit. Nightwing tells him that he knows. It was them. Heartless. Through the fire, Nightwing can see Heartless standing there, staring right at him fire begins to spread around the homeless children's encampment with Nightwing telling everyone to stay behind him. Barbara radios in asking what's going on and Nightwing tells her that he's here. Heartless. Nightwing looks back at the kids telling them to hang on tight. He's going to get them out of here and but that's the moment that Heartless takes out a fire extinguisher clearing a path. Come on kids off you go. Nightwing asks what is he doing and Heartless tells him, I don't want to watch them die. I want to watch them run. He reaches into his coat, pulling out the gun that he uses to steal hearts, telling him, I've heard of you. Was hoping we'd get a chance to meet Nightwing, Bloodhaven's guardian angel. You must have quite a heart. The gun is fired, but Nightwing ducks, throwing his baton, but before it can even hit Heartless, he catches it, using it to smack Nightwing back with his own weapon. 
Barbara again asks what is going on, and Nightwing says that he just got hit so hard that he is seeing a concerning number of spots for a guy who should avoid more head injuries. Heartless follows up with a heavy punch, but Nightwing rolls out of the way just in time, telling him, you're fast and strong, but that's all you are. Your technique is terrible. You have the upgrades, but you haven't done the work. Like you've tried to take a shortcut to super villainy. Nightwing continues to dodge all of Heartless' attacks, but then jumps behind him to choke him out, telling him, it doesn't matter how strong you are, you still need to breathe. Heartless shouts in anger, throwing Nightwing off, and Nightwing tells him, that's it, get angry, I can work with that. Heartless gets back up, scoffing. This can wait. I can kill you later. And you expect what? That we're just gonna walk away? Heartless tells him, Of course you will. Because I know your pathetic weakness. You care. Heartless pulls out a small switch telling him, All those kids are running? They're running towards the pier. Which is where I wanted them to go. I wanted to see their fear. I wanted to see their faces. But it's okay. I can have a pretty vivid imagination. Nightwing quickly repels out, radioing to Tim. It's a trap! Get the kids off the pier! But before Tim has a chance to respond, Heartless activates the bombs, blowing up the only walkway back to land. The fire quickly spreads, and Tim tells them all that he's going to need a better option than forcing a bunch of kids into the sea. You got any ideas, dick? Nightwing continues to make his way over to them, telling Barbara to patch him into the Maritime Distress Channel. If they need help, they should try asking for it. Once the line is connected, Nightwing calls out, Mayday, Mayday, there are hundreds of children in need of rescue at the end of Bloodhaven Pier 12. I repeat, for a few moments there's nothing. Then all of the ships across the harbor begin to report in that they are on their way. The message has been heard. Nightwing stops for a moment. Not everything in the city is broken. Barbara, alert the local hospital and, but before he could finish his statement, he passes out. A short while later, Nightwing awakens in his apartment, asking what happened, and Barbara examines him, telling him that he lost consciousness. He is still recovering from being shot in the head and being hit by an enhanced supervillain. Nightwing sits up. Yeah, that would do it. Tim tells him that Bitewing was worried too, and Nightwing's dog begins to wag her tail and bark. <laughs> Bitewing? It's actually great, but her name is Haley. Tim asks if he's really going to tell the people in this room that they can't have two names. And Barbara says, I have three! But while you were out, I did some digging. The woman that we saw Boss Maroney with the other day, I found out who she is. As Barbara holds up her laptop, Nightwing looks at the picture and a headline stating Mayor Zuko. And Nightwing asks, wait, what? Barbara says she did more research. She's Tony Zuko's daughter from his first marriage, but Tony didn't stick around past her eighth birthday to raise her. Nightwing sighs, well, that's a positive. And Tim tells him that she was raised by the Maroney family instead. And Nightwing says, right. That's so much worse! I really wanted to help clean up the city with the officials, but this, this is going to make it a lot harder. I'll pay Melinda Zuko a visit and see what I could find out. But Barbara tells him, absolutely not! You need rest. Your injuries aren't something that you can just brush off. So, Nightwing rests. Long enough for Barbara and Tim to leave. There's no way that he was going to sleep in when the criminal daughter of the men who killed his parents is now the mayor of his city. He sneaks over to Melinda's apartment, breaking in, and when he does, Melinda's bodyguard waits for him around the corner. As she swings, Nightwing ducks, rolls, kicking the sword away, but still manages to be thrown off balance enough to be knocked down the stairs. Melinda comes out of the next room with a bat, stating, It's okay, Audrey, I've got this! And all Nightwing could hear after that was a loud thud. So a short while later, Nightwing shakes his head, waking up again. They could already feel that his arms and legs are tied up, and wait, there's more. His mask, his mask is gone. As Nightwing looks up, Melinda holds up the mask. Dick Grayson? In a fit of anger, Nightwing rips the ropes, telling her, You know me? Well, I know you too. You worked for the Maroney crime family, and you're the daughter of Tony Zuko. Melinda says, No, she's not. She thought she was for a long time, but when she learned the truth, her real father is John Grayson. I'm your sister. As the dimly lit room falls silent with that news, Nightwing stands still for a moment, processing what he was just told. I've studied my family tree. I'd know if my father had other children. Melinda begins to question him, but he quickly pulls out his mask, and he says, hold on a second. In his earpiece, Barbara is shouting, asking if everything's okay, and Nightwing tells her, yeah, yeah, uh, call off whatever rescue is about to take place. She tells him that they attacked him, and Nightwing says that these people defended themselves from a masked man who broke into their home. As the call goes out, everyone turns back, and Nightwing lets out a sigh of relief, with Melinda asking if everything's okay. He tells her, yeah, he almost had a building full of very overprotective superheroes. Anyway, let's talk. 
A few moments later, in a quick change, Nightwing asks who is he meeting, and Melinda walks into the next room stating that this is her mother. Nightwing steps in, and the older woman turns and looks at him, quietly gasping. Oh my god, it's like looking back in time. You look so much like John. You have the same kindness in your eyes, and there's Mary shining in that beautiful Romani smile. She looks over at Melinda, asking what has she told him, and Melinda says only who she was. She thought that the rest best come from her. So she explains that her name is Malie Lim, and this all began a long time ago when she was 23 and paid for when she came to this country. Tony Zuko was violent and possessive, and she had no interest in being possessed. So one night, Tony took her to a circus, and that was where she took her opportunity to escape. She ran away, blending in with the crowd, and when Tony went looking, he found John. Tony was, well, quick to point his gun, asking where she went, but of course, John wasn't having it. There was a scuffle, and both Mary and John were about to take Tony down when they were stopped by the ringleader. When asked what he was doing, Tony said that he was looking for his wife, to which the ringleader said, no one has come by except the performers, and with that, he kindly asked Tony to leave. Once Tony left, the ringleader asked if she is in his trailer, and John told him, of course. So after that, she joined the circus, traveling with John and the others. But please understand, this was before his parents were together. John and her weren't involved very long, but long enough. Tony eventually found out and came back to take her back, and he and his thugs hurt John pretty bad. It was after that that she gave birth to Melinda. Tony's ego wouldn't allow him to voice what he suspected, but he always knew the truth, and he got angrier. The next time that she escaped, Tony didn't try to stop her. He was going to bring Melinda to the circus to see John, but then she found him. They all looked so happy performing together. John, his new wife, and Dick. And after everything that they had done for her before, they didn't deserve this. They didn't deserve an illegitimate child, a woman fleeing again. So she left. She had always planned to come back one day, but before she found the courage, Tony killed them. She was always so sorry for what happened for what that cowardly, abusive man Tony Zuko did to them and to him. But you have a good life now, right? You're loved? Nightwing tells her yes. Mei Li nods, stating, good. She's glad that him and Melinda finally have a chance to meet. And did he hear? She's now the mayor. Nightwing says that he knows. It was wonderful to meet them, and as much as he wanted to, Nightwing held back wanting to say sorry that her daughter was also a criminal. As the two leave, he asks, your mother doesn't know the truth, does she? about who you really are? Melinda says that he doesn't know who she is. And just then, there's a knock at the door. And as Audrey looks out, she sees dozens of armed police and a large looming shadow. As the lights shine through the room, Melinda asks what's happening. And Audrey says that it's him. It's Blockbuster. Seconds later, Commissioner McLean calls out over his speaker. This is the Bloodhaven PD. Come out with your hands up. Blockbuster says, two minutes, two minutes, and I'm going in, Commissioner. Back at the other side of the door, Melinda says before whatever this is happens, he needs to know the truth. Nightwing tells her, I do know the truth. I've seen your FBI file. Melinda tells him that what he probably saw was a file with more redaction than words. Fine, tell me you don't work for Boss Maroney and Blockbuster. She says that she doesn't, but both men certainly think that she does. Her file will tell him that she grew up with the Maronis, but what it won't tell him is that she brought down two crime bosses from the inside. Now she's worked very hard to get to where she's at, and she plans to do the exact same thing for Bloodhaven. Nightwing is stunned. Wait, really? You have difficulty believing that someone could have a double life, Dick? I thought about what kind of person you might be for years, and you know that my brother is Bloodhaven's guardian superhero? We can help each other. We can bring these people down. Actually, we can do even more. Nightwing says, I was about to do something, and well, I want to tell you. I want to believe you. McLean yells over the speaker that they know that Nightwing is in there. So Nightwing gets changed, telling her, right now, they need to think that I'm a dangerous vigilante that just broke into the mayor's home. After two minutes, Blockbuster kicks down the door, seeing Melinda and Audrey tied to the chairs and asks, did Nightwing get anything from you? She tells him no. Did he have people watching her house? Blockbuster unties her. Of course, I protect all of my assets. Where is he? Audrey motions her head towards the open window informing Blockbuster that Nightwing went that way. So Blockbuster turns, charging out through it. Outside, one of the helicopters calls out that he's on the roof. So Blockbuster jumps up, landing in front of Nightwing. 
<laughs> I'm so over men who think that they're so powerful, the law doesn't apply to them. And I know Mayor Zuko is working for you. I'll find a way to prove it, Blockbuster. <laughs> doesn't matter. I own the police, the courts, even Bloodhaven. No one would act against me, Nightwing. Sure, you scare a lot of people. But don't confuse fear with respect. Plenty of people would like to see you face some consequences. Blockbuster charges in, punching down where Nightwing is standing, and as Nightwing dodges, he says, This isn't a fight we should have. It's a long way down. Right! Fire! Suddenly, a turret on the helicopter opens fire onto the building, with Nightwing beginning to run towards it. As he gets closer, he leaps up, shooting two hooks from his batons that latch onto two of the officers, and uses that to swing up under the chopper and up through the opening. After tying the men up, the pilot holds out his cuffs, telling him, Just take us in the chopper. So, a few days later, after getting some rest, Nightwing lands on a building. Superman flies over to him, asking, What brings you to Metropolis? Nightwing looks at the Man of Steel. I have an idea, and I thought I might need some advice from someone with a unique perspective. From an alien? No, one of the most human people I know. Alfred left me a lot, but I don't think that there's anything heroic about being a billionaire. I'm sorry about Alfred, Dick. I looked up to him. Nightwing asked, wait, Superman looked up to Alfred Pennyworth? <laughs> of course I did. The world would have been lost without the heroes that he helped raise. Without his generosity, his love, his support, the two of us are a lot alike. Now, what's your idea? Later as the sun rises, Superman says that that is quite an idea. And Nightwing tells him, yeah, I'm worried that it's too small. No, no, no. It's not small, it's focused. If you're successful, the rest of the country, the rest of the world could see that's possible. But you already know about this. You don't need anyone else's input. You thought it through enough. Superman then begins to fly up telling him, I need to grab dinner, but I have a favor to ask. I might have to go away for a while, and a lot's going to fall on my son, John. It would mean a lot if you could give him some guidance and maybe some friendship, Dick. Of course. If you think it'll help, I'll be there. Superman tells him, Honestly, I couldn't think of any better role model. Thank you. So a few days later, Nightwing is looking out of his apartment, stating that there's a lot of press outside, and it would be easier with a mask. Barbara tells him that he's talked about it for days. He knows what he's doing. Does he know what he's going to name it? Nightwing tells her he does, but before he goes, he wants to say thanks for her friendship. If it wasn't for her, he wouldn't be able to. But Barbara grabs and kisses him to stomp him and says, go get him, Boy Wonder. After taking a deep breath, Nightwing steps out, speaking into the microphone. My name is Dick Grayson, and I've just become a billionaire. But I don't believe any one person should have so much when others have so little. So I'm giving it all away. I've decided to use it to establish one of the world's largest self-sustaining foundations. I'm going to be helping targeted areas elsewhere in the world, and the bulk of this wealth will go directly into Bloodhaven. This will be the first phase. I want to help. So today, I'm announcing the Alfred Pennyworth Foundation. As he finishes his speech, he heads back inside, and everyone texts him about what a great job he's done. Even Batman calls to let him know that he honored Alfred today. Meanwhile, elsewhere, two men are watching the news, and the first says, Dick Grayson, and the second asks, Do you know him? The Shadow Man says yes. His first. He owes him so much. Grayson made him into what he is today. The plans that he has for Bloodhaven don't really line up with him, though. Heartless sits in his chair, holding a jar with a heart in it, stating, I'll have to take his heart before he gives it to the city. And there you have it, the first arc of Nightwing, which now leads into his Fear State crossovers. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I actually really, really do enjoy what Tom Taylor has done with this, giving him a dog, giving him a new purpose in Bloodhaven, kind of connecting him with his friends, and giving him an overarching villain, which is new. I I mean, if, if Heartless already existed, I didn't know about it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and don't forget to go to your local comic book store, pick up the trade that's related to this, or buy it at your digital retailers. Thank you guys so much for your continued support, and I will see you next time right here at Comic Story.